Hi everyone, I'm Susa and I would like to talk about how to eliminate config drift between environments. As part of my presentation, I want to dive into the problem space first, and then of course also discuss how a solution could look like. As part of that, I'm going to talk about SCORE, an open source project I've been contributing to. So let's dive right in. What do we mean when we talk about config drift between environments? Config drift is just one of these terms that can mean a lot of different things depending on the context you're in. So for this talk, I want to refer to config drift as inconsistencies between environments that run on different platforms. Just to give you an example, you might be running your workloads um, locally with a lightweight tool such as Docker Compose, while then deploying to a platform orchestrator like Kubernetes in a remote cloud environment. The problem here is that a developer who now wants to promote their workload from local to production in this scenario also has to be familiar with the platforms in place. In this scenario, it's Docker Compose and Kubernetes. And of course, any other supporting tooling along the way. So you might use Terraform to provision and allocate any required resources, um, or you use Helm to simplify your deployments to Kubernetes. The challenge here really is to keep your workload specification in sync along the way. If entities are configured differently across the different platforms that you deploy to, the risk of config drift increases. Maybe I'll give you uh, a bit more of a concrete example. So let's say your workload has a dependency on a database. Um, locally, again, that database um, dependency might be resolved by pointing to a Postgres image or a mock server, for example. Um, on its way to production, however, the database is now provisioned with Terraform. So making this transition happen can be quite a cumbersome task. And the fact here that production environments often require that extra bit of specialized knowledge or operational expertise is the reason for that. So taking a step back from the developer's point of view, they develop and run everything successfully in their local environment, uh, for example, with Docker Compose, and they even pass the tests in their CI pipeline. The question for them now, of course, remains, how is that new database dependency I need or a configurational change I made going to be reflected appropriately in the next cloud environment, uh, which might be running on Kubernetes, for example? And this question is answered differently in every team. Um, and of course, it also depends on the complexity of the task at hand, right? So um, a variable change is easier to keep in sync and manage than uh, provisioning a new database. So the issue here really is that we have no standardized approach when it comes to ensuring consistent workload configuration. And in practice, many things might happen. Um, there might be that go-to ops engineer um, that you can reach out to and they will help you provision that database or make sure everything's configured correctly after a change. Um, you might dive in yourself or you have a centralized ops team that you can create a ticket for and they will help you out if you get stuck. Either way, the, the bottom line here is that if a property is wrongly specified or has simply been overlooked, um, the team will end up with a failed deployment um, or also just a workload that's running in a way um, as it's not intended to. So now that we have a more concrete understanding of the problem space and what we mean by config drift, we of course also want to talk about solutions. And the solution I want to talk about today is called SCORE, as I mentioned before. Um, it's an open source project that aims to eliminate exactly the problem I just talked about in terms of config drift. So. Introducing SCORE, uh, one spec to rule them all. Um, SCORE, as I mentioned before, aims to reduce config drift between environments um, as one of its main goals. So looking at what SCORE is in more detail, um, SCORE itself offers a workload specification that captures a workload's runtime requirements. So that means the score specification essentially captures everything a workload requires to run. And um, the, the main idea here is that developers work with that single workload spec instead of juggling multiple platform and environment related um, specs and value files. So looking at the spec in more detail and its characteristics, um, one of the main things that it offers is that it's platform agnostic so 
it's not tied, as the name says, to a specific platform or a tool, but can be widely integrated. So um, that really depends on your tech stack, right? It might be Compose, Helm, Customize, ECS, really whatever you work with. The main point here is that the developer gets to describe their workloads runtime requirements in a way that doesn't require any knowledge of these platforms. Um, the next item uh, related to that is tightly scoped. So the score spec describes common workload level items and thereby shields from the complexity of container orchestrators. Then of course, it's also declarative. So the developer describes what their workloads requires to run, um, meaning it's like a cooking recipe or kind of a to-do list. Um, and that essentially says, if you follow these instructions that I have specified, um, my workload will run as intended. So um, just to show how this looks in practice, as mentioned before, this uh, is just an example score file. So um, it describes common workload level items. Uh, so what we have here is a, um, a container with an image, container overrides, a dependency on a Postgres database, and also dependency on a second workload. Now, the idea is that this file is um, saved alongside the code of the workload in source control. So again, one file per workload, kind of a, establishing a single source of truth. And um, of course, now that we established a single source of truth, that's great. The entire team can refer to the score file when needing to understand how the workload is configured and how it should run. Um, but of course, it needs to be executed or put into practice somehow. Um, and that's how we get to the score implementation. So um, the score implementation is kind of the counterpart to the score specification that I just showed you. Um, and what this means essentially is that the score implementation is a CLI tool that the spec can be executed against to generate the required configuration. This required configuration that is generated by a score can then be combined with um, additional platform or environment specific configuration to actually run the workload in the target environment. So this additional configuration was kind of abstracted away from the developer initially, um, but then to make your workload run, of course, um, additional configuration that is then platform and environment specific is required. Um, but it might be easiest to just show you how this looks with a graphic. Um, as you can see here, we have the score.yaml file, our score spec that captures everything that we need to know. And then we can choose a score implementation. And this, of course, entirely depends on your tech stack. So let's say you work with Compose and Helm. You'll pick the score compose and score Helm implementation, um, which accordingly will generate uh, Docker compose files based on the score spec and value files for your Helm chart. And that's essentially how SCORE aims to reduce the risk of config drift. Now, what happens here is that configuration is generated in a one-directional and automated manner. Um, this means the, um, the team really has that single source of true to refer to in terms of the SCORE spec, and then the CLI takes care of translating everything accurately. Um, of course, by doing that in an automated way, making the whole process a lot less um, error prone. So looking at the impact this has on the developer's experience, um, first, of course, uh, first of all, we're of course looking at pain-free local development. So developers um, essentially no longer have to worry about configuration inconsistencies down the line, as um, down the line meaning in remote environments that they're deploying to as the configuration is generated from the same score file um, locally as remotely, meaning if, you're, um, if your workload runs locally, it will also run remotely, um, simply because that main bit of configuration is captured in one separate file. Um, another benefit that's worth looking at is separation of concerns between DEF and OPS. So what SCORE allows to do is essentially um, establish a clear contract um, between dev and ops. So the ops team with the score spec is provided with a, with a comprehensive set of configurational requirements. 
which if meant ensure that the workload runs as intended. So you could say that code here in with score is being passed to, through the fence rather than being thrown over it. Um, another point is making the acquiring of op skills less urgent. So with that configuration work, um, that translation work being done automatically by the CLI, um, of course, that doesn't necessarily require in-depth knowledge by the developer. So that, of course, doesn't mean you can just forget about all the additional tools. Having a basic understanding of your team's tech stack is, is very important, especially when troubleshooting. Um, this just refers to the fact that it makes it less urgent. Um, if you're a junior developer that just started figuring out how to write JavaScript, um, Kubernetes might maybe not be the, the first thing on mind. So in that case, you could just trust SCORE um, to take care of all the um, complicated configuration work for you, and you can focus on your code for now. Um, related to that is also the next point, layered abstraction. Um, this essentially refers to what I just said. You can stay on the top level with SCORE, or you can dive into um, the deepest level, um, for example, the, the generated Kubernetes manifest. Um, so score here really doesn't necessarily aim to abstract away. It's uh, kind of instead trying to make the tools you work with um, a little more accessible for you. Exactly. So these are kind of the, the biggest points of how if score is um, adopted uh, correctly can improve the developer's experience. So looking at the um, yeah, details of score, as I mentioned before, SCORE is an uh, open source project. It was launched in November 2022, so it's still quite young. Um, we launched it alongside two example reference implementations, um, Compose and Helm, that I just showed before. And last year, our focus was mainly on community growth, like getting the idea out there, um, getting feedback, getting people to play and use the tool and also just understanding, does this make sense? Does the idea resonate with developers? And um, since that all worked out quite well, uh, we're now focusing on improving product maturity and of course, extending our suite of CLI tools. Um, so we're really encouraging people to build their own CLIs um, or yeah, play with the ones we have and extend them if needed. Um, that would be yeah the next big step for us. But we also have a um, a roadmap on GitHub. I'll just share the links here in a second. So um, this is the link for our GitHub repository that you're welcome to check out. Um, we also have a doc site that you can find under docs.score.dev and um, also our blog with a couple of helpful tutorials. Exactly. And yeah, that's already it from my side. Um, thanks everyone for listening and I'm looking forward to seeing you all around at PlatformCon. Bye.